This is an introduction to how Penalto works. So you would begin Penalto, you get to Penalto by going to your Moodle class, and on the left, you can see here a Penalto focus block. Under the completed recording sessions, right after each class, I'll immediately upload the class session and you should see the recording. Please take note of your particular class session. It will all give the day and the date with the time of the recording so they can verify that it was indeed so the class session that you want. And all class sessions for semester will be piled up here. So to open a particular class recording session, just click on the link and you, you should get a security pop-up and just press continue. Now, depending on the settings of your computer, the first time that you start Pinoto is possible that, mm -hmm. uh, that you might have to enable a plugin such as Silverlight, and so you do that, and once you enable that, it should function, and it should be compatible with most modern browsers. Okay, the recording will so automatically start, recorded. so I'll pause and it. All so I pause it here to show you uh, the, the general screen that you'd see to begin with. So in the middle here is what is recorded, and as you note, it's what is on my class screen that's recorded and my voice. Uh, there's no video of myself or yourselves. There is no uh, recording of the audio of the students. Now the first thing to note in this main screen, normally you'll see what is on the screen, but I want to draw your attention to the bottom right here where you have slides or screen. Normally you always want the screen button to be pressed because it will show whatever is on the screen, but sometimes uh, the slides button might be pressed and there it will only show the content of the PowerPoint slides. Now if at that particular time in class there, there was no PowerPoint slide being displayed, it will show the first PowerPoint slide that was eventually displayed, which in this class session was 14 minutes into the class session. So that's definitely what you, not what you want. So you will almost always want to keep the screen button pressed. Uh, so I just want to note that. The playback features are pretty standard. Uh, you press play to play. You press pause uh, to pause the recording. Then here is the sound volume. In fact, I can go ahead and mute it, and that way it can play and progress uh, while I keep on talking. You can unmute to hear the sound, are recorded. and you go back and forth. Okay, now at, uh, with normal playback, you can jump at any point, and it will point to that time in the class session and keep on playing. Now on the bottom here, the bottom row, you can see that it actually shows screenshots. So it shows a screenshot for each three minute session of what was on the screen. However, when PowerPoint slides are displayed, it then shows a new screenshot for each new slide that is displayed on the screen. So you can quickly jump from slide to slide. And when, again, when it comes to a part of class when there is no slide, okay, like towards the end here, then every three minutes it'll take an updated screenshot. And so you can quickly go find which part of the class session you want to view. Because often you might want to watch a particular part, but not the whole thing. Okay, so I'll go back earlier in the session. Uh, one useful feature is sometimes you might be listening. Okay, so here, let's say I'll have uh, the sound on here. As in general, how we use a clicker? So, um, clicker reduce the sound. So sometimes maybe um, I mentioned something and you want to repeat it. There's this minus ten or ten seconds back. So you can get a 10 second repeat or press it twice for 20 seconds or three times for 30 seconds. So it's useful to repeat something I'll just mention that you might have missed or you want to hear again. 
Now, one feature that is uh, surprisingly useful is this speed. So by default, it plays everything back at the same speed at live speed, in which everything was played, displayed, explained. But for a long class session, two and a half hours, it's a long time. So you can actually speed up the playback, or you could slow it down. So if there's something that maybe you felt I was going too fast, you can slow it down and watch it at three quarters of speed or half the speed. Now, the sound is very difficult when you slow down, but speeding up is usually quite helpful. So here, 1.25 speed is probably what you would normally want to listen to. Because if you consider that in a one and a half hour session, when you listen to 1.25 uh, speed, then you're cutting off 15 minutes. That means a one and hour, 15 minutes class session, you can listen to the whole thing in one hour and you hardly notice the difference. If there's one part that's too fast, you can return to normal speed or you can rewind. Um, if you can handle it, you can do 1.5 times speed. Um, so uh, I recommend this, especially if you're listening to an entire class session. You might find it quite useful uh, in that case. OK. So uh, these uh, to get more screen size, you can hide these bottom slides by just pressing the hide button. Then it makes the, gives you more screen size. You can also click to see it full screen uh, within your browser. So really maximize the screen size and see everything that you can. So these are, but you still get your uh, playback buttons there. And then you can uh, return there. Okay, I'll move it again. So these are the basic navigation uh, tools that you would want to use when using uh, Panopto. Now, some other features that are quite useful are on the left. So first, under contents, it, uh, Panopto automatically records the titles of each PowerPoint slide. And by recording the titles, that's a way that you can quickly find where exactly you are in the Panopto slides. Uh, so you can jump to the slides by title, it's useful. But again, uh, looking at the thumbnails does the same thing and it's more visual, so that might be more useful in, in that sense. Then on the notes section here, you can type notes at any point. And the nice thing is that the notes, uh, so here's a note about student status. When you save your notes, it saves the time in the class session that note was saved. So the notes are synchronized to a particular point in the class session. So it helps you keep track. You have notes on this particular uh, time of the class session. Uh, similar to notes, you can have bookmarks. So bookmarks are quite similar. Uh, however, usually bookmarks are much briefer reminders, whereas notes might be more detailed. Comments. Now, your notes and bookmarks are private. They're saved within your own profile. But if you want to make general comments that other students can see, you can type them here. And so now it's uh, visible uh, to anyone who is on the system, and it shows who made that comment. So it's uh, the feature if you want to communicate with other people, share your notes, or something like that. Okay. Now a couple uh, things to note about um, my Panopto recordings. I record everything in the class session except for the reading quizzes. Uh, those are not recorded, but everything else is recorded. Uh, another thing is that a lot of the time I use a laser pointer in class, and because that's not part of the system, unfortunately, uh, that is not uh, recorded. And so you might just have to follow my voice to try to 
uh, figure out what I'm highlighting when I use a laser pointer. Okay, so those are the basic features of Panopto. And if you have any other questions, uh, you can uh, post questions. Uh, there's help features here. Uh, there's online help with more answers, or you can post uh, questions on Piazza, and I'll do my best to answer.